Welcome to the Den of Gadgets. Howdy ho, guys and gals. It's Red, your friendly neighborhood. Well, <laughs> normally I'm a tool bear, but welcome to the, uh, the first episode of the Den of Gadgets. Yeah, this is our new channel that we're branching out here. You know, we've been talking a lot of tech and other stuff around the channel over at Den of Tools. And a lot of guys have been saying, hey, we want to see more of that. But I know a lot of the other guys and gals over there are like, yeah, we want you to stick to the tools. So we're going to branch out and uh, we'll start posting all, all that other kind of fun techie kind of stuff over here. Anyway, if you had been following the saga over there, you probably know that uh, not too long ago, my beloved MSI laptop uh, had a uh, had a stroke, if you will. And quickly became, uh, shall we say, non-operable. <laughs> well, we attempted to fix it. We had great plans. But in the end, it just wasn't going to be viable in any kind of easy-to-do kind of configuration. We do feel that at some point we will be able to bring it back to life in, a, in another incarnation. But it's going to take a little bit more work. And we had to keep working because this was, is my main working PC. Well, on that PC is an M.2 drive. And that is something that looks like one of these. It's M.2 SATA, to be honest. And this is, for those of you who don't know, this is a really fast version of an internal drive and in an interesting form factor that allows you to get, uh, you know, get your get your your PC, your computer moving pretty quickly. But what do you do when the device you have decides to uh, to kick the bucket? You know, normally when I'm trying to recover stuff, you know, I have it over on a USB drive, and unfortunately. You know, I didn't move everything over prior to this because it kind of came as a surprise. So what if you could do that? What if, though, you could take your M.2 drive and mix it with all the benefits of, like, an external USB drive, uh, specifically a high-speed drive, like a 3.0, 3.1 drive? Well, you can do that now, and we're going to show you exactly how we did that in this situation. So what we got here is, uh, I think it's pronounced Fideco, F-I-D-E-C-O, something like that. I'll link down below and uh, I'll show you some more images of it from the website. I ordered it off Amazon. It's an aluminum shell with a built-in heat sink, which I thought was pretty nice. You take two screws off the front. You slide out here the carriage with it. That's got the uh, M.2 adapter as well as different mounting points because these M.2 drives come in, in different segments. The little brass... Uh, hold down it's kind of interesting you put the card in push it down screw it in and that's it it just holds it right in place it's uh i mean stupid easy to put together i think it took me all of about five minutes total and uh yeah i mean that's all there is to it you just snap it in put the the hold down a uh, little rivet thing on place and then you just slide it here into here just try not to drop it apparently uh i'm pretty good at that and uh, anyway, get, the, get our light source back on here. I know, I promise we'll have better lighting in the future. This is our first video. We're trying to figure things out here. So you just slide in. And when you put the, put the faceplate back on, the one thing that I'm going to say is there's a little tiny hole off to the side. That's going to line up with an LED that's over on the right-hand side there. So just snap that on there. And then it's just the uh, the two screws holding it in place. A little challenging if you got big old uh, bare mitts like me working with these tiny little screws. But, you know, you take your time, you focus a little bit, you can do it. And there's, there's practically nothing technical to this. This is, you know, as I always joke, it's like Legos. You're just snapping one thing into the other. You know, maybe throw a, a screw or two in there. It even comes with a screwdriver, I should point that out. That screwdriver came in the kit. Um, it even came with extra screws, so in case you damaged or lost these little buggers, you still had those. It comes with the USB uh, cable. It's USB-C to uh, uh, regular USB 3.0 or 3.1. And there's, on the end of it, uh, or I should say sitting on the desk there, you can see it also has an adapter to take that USB back to a USB-C if that's what you want to do. Of course, you can use a Thunderbolt as well. Lots of great options. Well, there you go. There you have it. That's the uh, the M.2 to USB conversion kit there. I picked it off of Amazon. It was under $16. Got here pretty quick. I got to say, it, it worked flawlessly. It did exactly what it was supposed to do. It's plenty quick. I really enjoy using it. Now, there's some things I want to talk about when we come to these kind of enclosures. First of all, 
is that there's several different types of M.2. M.2 isn't really a different standard so much as a form factor. So the regular one, which is the ones we see there in the SATA, that's M.2, or in the center, <laughs> M.2 SATA. And uh, then over on the left, we see the M.2 NVMe. Now that's the new super quick one on the block. And then we have the older M SATA on the far right. Now, this drive, this enclosure specifically, I'm not saying they don't make other ones because they do, but this enclosure, if you go over to Amazon, and I am going to put the link down below, if you go to Amazon and pick it up, it only works with the M.2 SATA. You're going to have to find a different one if you have one of the other drives. Now, what is this great for? Well, it's certainly great for recovering data that is on a, a machine that died, or if you're upgrading a machine. Say, you, like this one has a 256 gig uh, drive in it. Let's say I wanted to upgrade to one terabyte. Well, there's not two ports in the machine, so I can't just simply, you know, pop the other one in, transfer everything over. I could move it to a different disk, or I could try putting it on something else external. But, you know, for this kind of situation, it makes it really usable. And that way, I'm also not just throwing away some really good technology there. Because, you know, 256 gigs is nothing to sneeze at, especially when it's zippy quick like this. Now, is M.2 as fast when it's running externally as it is internally? Well, the way it works internally is it uses two SATA channels to get that speed. Externally, it's running through the USB bus. And if it is a fast enough one on your PC, and like say you're going through, say, a Thunderbolt port, yeah, as long as the adapter is of sufficient, you know, good grade technology, it should be right up there with your internal. My guess is it might be a little bit behind, but, you know, I mean, it's got to go through an adapter, right? But that said, it should be so quick or at least quick enough that you can't really notice on a day-to-day -day basis. So this might also be a great way to transport large amounts of, of data with you. You know, rather, you know, if you got to go sneaker net, it's often faster if you can get a big enough drive. Anyway, also the one thing I really liked about this design was the, the heat sinks on it. These drives can get kind of toasty and a... There's a lot of different choices out there. Some of them very sleek. Some of them plastic. I would avoid any of the plastic ones. They're not going to dissipate any heat. Some of them are aluminum. They've got little thermal pads that come in to help, you know, transfer the heat to the aluminum shell. That's great. This one, and I, yeah, this one is aluminum also, but it's not a thin shell so much as it's designed as a heat sink. And I found that it does a really good job of dissipating the heat on that drive. Anyway, that's all the bear has for you. Let me know what else you'd want the bear to cover here on the new Denna Gadgets. I guess I'm going to need to get a new shirt here, new wardrobe or something. Anyway, that's all we got for you today. You all take care. God bless. And as always, shine on.